Hey there, have you ever wondered what the best way to track projects and tasks in Airtable is? My name is Andrew Dodds, I'm a co-founder here at SimpleStack, and today we're gonna be taking a look at a feature you definitely should be using. That feature is called the list view. So let's jump into it. So uh, let's, uh, I'm gonna tell you about my base here really quickly. I am using the project management template and uh, you can access that when you first create a base. Go ahead and search for the project management template. It's gonna come with three tables, and these tables are a people table that has uh, all of the, the people at a company and uh, various different information about those people. Then we've got projects and some summary information on the projects, including the tasks that are associated and then we have the task table, which has some uh, great information for start dates, daily time required, all of that kind of stuff. Okay, so this is a pretty good table to start with. You, of course, could start with your actual data, but I think to, to illustrate how to use the list view in a powerful way, we're gonna start with some, some uh, pre-inputted information. And what we're gonna do is jump into the interfaces here. If you've never used interfaces, it's just a window into your underlying data that we were just in there and allows you to build uh, pages that show you just subsets of that information. We're gonna call our interface the home. And then within an interface, of course, you can create multiple pages. It's just a grouping of pages, so you can think of it as an interface like a folder. We're doing the list view. And we're going to go with the most granular level. So when you build an interface, you're going to point to one of the tables. We're going to point to the task table for this because that's the most granular level. Okay, so we've got a page in our interface here called tasks. Nothing's published quite yet. And we're going to go ahead and uh, configure this information now. Okay. Um, so uh, every single record that you see on here is a uh, row of data on the tasks table, okay? And we're gonna start organizing this information in a way that, that makes sense. One of the first things we're gonna wanna do is decide what fields to show on this, this level. Um, there's a lot of fields that we might choose from, but I'm just gonna go ahead and also add the, the start date. Okay, and then maybe we want to drag that start date to the beginning here. Okay, perfect. So this looks decent. Now, uh, I want to introduce you to this concept that only exists in lists, and that's called levels. And levels allow you to take a linked record or a linked record field and to use it to group the list to establish a hierarchy. So to add a level up here in the hierarchy, you're gonna go ahead and click on that and it's gonna allow you to get started. And so you could either go down, you know, down a level or up a level. So a project in the level of the hierarchy is gonna be up a level from tasks. So we're gonna add a level above and uh, all of our linked record fields are gonna show up here. So we've got projects. I'm gonna go ahead and select that click next and uh, for now I'm just gonna say done so you see what's happened here is we have our projects that are now expandable and we've got a nice sort of organized more organized list now one of the things I like to do with all these types of views is to collapse by default now, when you collapse by default, what, that, what that's gonna mean is if we publish this, so when you work with interfaces, you have to publish to, to view your new changes. When you come to this page, it's gonna be nice and stacked like this, and then you, as you expand, you'll see more of the detail that you're after, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and go back into edit mode. And now one of the things we get to do is we get to decide what other fields we want to show from the project level. Now remember, uh, we have all of this great summary information coming into the project, such as the duration of days, the percent staffed, um, uh, and I think there's also percent done. So I kind of think about pulling in some of those progress bars. That's right where, where I go to with it. So let's do that. 
Um, so we can, we can select this here. And if you click into the fields now, you're going to see that you have a drop down here. So these are the level, uh, the, the level that you've selected and the fields that will show. So right now we have some showing for tasks. And if we go up a level of projects, we just have the project name. But we also wanted percent of tasks staffed and done. So that's looking pretty good. Okay, and one of the things you, you can do here, and this would just be a stylistic choice, would be to go in there and edit the way that that's formatted and potentially move it from a bar to a circle. Um, now, while not completely necessary, I think it makes a, a uh, list view look a little cleaner. And so I'm going to do that on uh, both of these just for the sake of continuity. So there we go. We're moving it to a circle. And uh, now we've got percent done and percent staffed. So that's rolling that information up. And anything else that, that I may want to see, maybe not just the percent, but I also may want to pull in just the total uh, number of tasks um, that exist for the project. How as a user you might interact with this. So now I can go in, I can drill into the Mars Explorer project and see the exact tasks that make up these numbers, right? So this looks pretty good. Uh, I can see, oh, this person's not assigned and all of that. Now this is a pretty good start in terms of being able to understand what's going on with the project, but you'll notice that if I try to click into this, nothing happens. And so you can set this up so that it's optimized to also allow you to edit information for instance, being able to assign people. And you'll see that your metrics will update uh, immediately as a result. So let's just show an example of how you would do this. So go with that highlight, we get a sort of inner highlight. So once you've selected that, you're going to scroll down to user actions. And we are going to toggle on edit records in line. Okay. Now this is going to let me edit the tasks. So let me show you the difference now. So it remembers what I had done, which was expanded the Mars Explorer. Here we are. And uh, now, for instance, I can select an assignee. Let's say Malik is going to be assigned to this. And you'll see, take a look at the percentage of task staffed here in a moment. You'll see that it will move forward to 80%. So this would allow me to make those changes on, on the fly and edit the information. Okay. Now, if I wanted, if this was also a view where we wanted to allow folks to add new tasks, we'd have to do one more further piece of configuration, which is in that same section under the user actions, we want to add and delete records in line. Okay. Now, adding and deleting records uh, in line, if we go ahead and publish that so you can see it, you'll see that now we get a little plus sign here. And to add a record, someone would just click that plus and start uh, entering their information on uh, this task. Okay. Now, this now becomes a part of the overall equation that is being summarized at the project level. A user also can choose to uh, group pieces of the information on, on their own. So for instance, you'll see that I've just grouped by status within the Mars Explorer. Um, that will be the case for all of the projects as well. So now I'm grouped by status. So there may be a certain amount of things that you want to pre-configure and a certain amount of things that you want to leave up to the user, right? Um, that is a balance that you'll figure out over time getting feedback. They could also sort this information, okay? So if we wanted to sort by the start date or some other value within each grouping, it will sort in the way that you have set it up. And you can also filter by the uh, values, okay, that are, that are showing on the task level. It's got a good search function. You can even print this page. This is also how if if you wanted to pull this out into a saved PDF to pass around how you could do that, okay? And it sort of looks like that. 
Okay, so that is a few of the, the first uh, decisions that you'll probably make when you are designing a list view in the interface. A few other things that, that you can do that are, that are quite fun. So two of them that I wanna highlight are uh, elements and uh, click into record details. So we're gonna do the click into record details first and I'll show you what that looks like. When you enable the click into record details, what this does is it allows a user to click into the record and see that same record information in this, this more vertical kind of format where everything on this page is in relation to the record that you clicked on. Now the actual uh, design of this um, is, is up to you and we're not gonna cover that in this tutorial. But what you can do, for instance, is make the, um, make the fields editable, you can give it a little contrast and you can start to make this a really easy view to make updates and sort of focus on a single record as opposed to editing in line. And you may wanna use both. Usually it's a combination of both where you'll put a subset of the field, say, five or six on the, the list view, and then have the more detailed layout of maybe the 30 total fields um, on your detail page. These can also be broken up into different sections, and um, it's pretty easy to, to go through here and, and start pulling together a nice workflow, okay? So we've allowed them now to be able to click into records and uh, the final thing that I want to show you is what I like to call quick actions. Uh, they call them elements at, at Airtable, but it essentially allows you to, to either do a tab format or a drop down to drill down into the data. So here's an example of how that might work. We're going to use a drop down. Now, you can't use both. You can't have tabs and drop downs, but you can have tabs or drop downs. So an example of a drop down would be. Let's make it so that when a user comes to the page, they can select, I only want to see tasks of a certain status. So I only want to see in progress. Now this is really good for uh, things that you think your users may filter by frequently, as opposed to making them go into the filter and find it. Um, you can make it really easy for, for them to uh, drill down into what they frequently would, would want to look at. Okay, so that's one option. Uh, the other option that you can use is the tabs format, which uh, if we take the continuation of the, the status example, we're going to turn these into tabs, you can make a tab for each status. And so the way that works is you just put a filter on it. So you'd say where status is to do. And then for your subsequent ones, um, and you want to go ahead and give it a name. And then for your subsequent ones, you'll add them through this, this little blue plus here. So let's say in progress. And status is in progress. And uh, we'll just do a final one, which would be done. Now, one tab that will never go away is, as you can see, all tasks here. So there will always be an all records tab. But this allows us to split it out so that you would only see these specific ones uh, when you visit that tab. So see now if we publish this and take a look, we've got our uh, tasks that are to do, in progress, done, and we've got our roll-ups uh, by type. One other thing I'll tell you that's just a quick tip. It's, it's no uh, showstopper, but uh, if you right click when you're on a record here, um, you can expand all of the projects or close them all, all at once. So that, that can be a, a fun uh, little hack that will allow you to save some, some time to sort of be able to see everything or the context at once. And um, so that's my tip of the day. Okay, so uh, that 
is the basics and the foundation of the list view. Now there's uh, definitely other things that you can do with these. For instance, changing the row height so you get a more compact or a bigger view and little additional things there. You can also toggle this on to hide additional sections that don't have rows. So basically what, what that would do is it wouldn't show a project if it didn't have tasks as an example. So that might be something you would want to do, especially if the statuses are broken out, you wouldn't want to see a, a project showing up that didn't have tasks in that status, right? Um, okay, so that is the fundamentals of the list view. Let's go ahead and give this a publish and give it a quick run through, quick demo. So as a user, I'm dropping onto this page. I can see at the project level some summary information such as the percent of uh, tasks that are staffed, how much of the total tasks are done, the total tasks. As a user, you can also move around the column widths, which you can't do in a grid, so this is an advantage. I can expand a project to see all of the related tasks, and I can click into the related task to see our detail view. I can also edit and assign information here that will dynamically update. And if I want to quickly see tasks that are to do versus in progress or done, sort of filtering by the status, I can do that by clicking into the different sections here. So that is it. Well, thanks for sticking with me, everyone, on this list view. They are a flexible feature that you should be utilizing, especially when you are doing project management. Hope you got value from this tutorial. Feel free to like and subscribe if you did, and I'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.